Harris. Let's give you confidence, put him out there, and let him run with the one song. Strong, smart. Uh, you know, that's probably a, a blessing in disguise was Marcus and Parks being out. You know, we really know who they are. Uh, Man, it gave us an opportunity to really develop all these guys. I mean, a bunch of guys. I mean, we've had this, this, this offensive line has, has taken a huge step forward, as they should. We only lost one guy in J Mac, and so they're just older, and, and, they, and they've been through the battles. And we've got a real, and we really only have one senior this year, in Putnam. You know, so we got a really, really good group. Bunch of juniors, bunch of juniors, bunch of redshirt sophomores, and then you got some really dynamic freshmen. You know, and then a guy like Blake and Sadler, who who are you know. Coming, we were able to redshirt Saturday last year. Thankfully, it kind of worked out. Um, it wasn't our intention, but he got banged up, worked out. Those two young guys, but man, Harris is, he can just bend. He can move. He has great football IQ. He understands defense. Um, you know, he's incredibly well coached. He is as tough as they come. He's nasty. He can play, you know, both really three positions. Uh, very athletic, and, he, and he's got the mentality. You know, so he's a rare guy that, that physically and mentally it kind of matches up. Um, and Ian Reed and Big Zach, they're exactly what you want too. They're kind of your normal freshman. Like your normal freshman, there's usually a deficiency somewhere. You know, Ian, freaking tough, strong, physical, loves ball. Um, but but he's, he's, he's still kind of, you know, overloaded a little bit and it's, and it's coming a little slower from an installation standpoint. And we got to get his body in a little bit better, you know, uh, spot composition. My same thing with Zach. Tough, competitive, don't back down. Exactly what you want. That big guy can move and run, and he's physical, but he can't play at 380, right? You know, he was 405, and so now he's he's on his way. So we get him down there. Like Peyton Page was right at 400 when he got here. So if he's he'll keep buying into what we're asking him to do, we're gonna look up. That big dude is gonna be something special. So I just love those guys. But Harris, physically and mentally. He's just, he's just ready, and uh, so he'll he'll help this football team for sure, no doubt. Mitchell Mays, is he shooting? You think he'll be back? Yeah, he, same thing. He got back in practice today as well, so hopefully he'll be ready to go. He, he nothing major, but you know he's had, he's had to miss a few practices too. But, um, and but again, almost a blessing there too. We're, we're pretty confident in Mitchell and the progress that he's made. So it's really forced our hand with some of these guys, and it's, it's been really good. Is the thing they're trying to bleed down the cage neck a little bit, providing some comfort? Uh, no, I, these guys are just out here, man, competing against themselves and, and, you know, just trying to be the best version of themselves. I mean, CV's special. I mean, it's easy to see. The guy's gifted. He's only 17 years old. You know, he's a young guy. Uh, he's got a bright, bright future. You know, Cade's been amazing. You know, Cade has is, is, is just been awesome. I mean, all spring. And, uh, uh, and I'll tell you, Howard Helms has, has had his best spring. It's been fun to watch him. I mean, he's... He is by far the best version of Hunter Helms that we've seen. I mean, he's, he's processing things quick. Uh, you know, really good decision maker. He, if you, I don't know if you guys, would, I mean, if you really look at him, he's really physically kind of transformed his body and he's really gotten himself in, in really great shape, which has helped him mobility wise. But he's very, very confident. And uh, I'm really proud of him and what he's done. Uh, we're just now getting Paul Tyson back and he's been in the last couple of practices. He can't go live yet because you know he, he had a thumb surgery but he's back throwing and uh, I'll tell you what he he's he really is sharp and processes things well and you know we just I can't wait to we can kind of cut him loose but it's a good room man Trent Pearman Trent's gotten you know had a really good spring gotten a ton of uh, reps it's been good and it's a cool it's a good room but man CB is is uh, it's slowing down for him and now that he's here and he can go back through it this spring I mean this summer and then by the time we get to fall camp, he's going to get it for the third time. That kid's just going to get better and better. So we got a really good situation. Trent Howard said he felt like the offense started to click a little bit after the break. Did you see that? And how did they do today? Good. I mean, you know, some good, some bad. You know, just like on the defense, some good, some bad. Um, you know, it was, it was, they had a three and out, and they had a 17-play drive. You know, and they came back and they had a turnover, you know, in the red zone. So good and bad. but. As the head coach, I kind of like that, uh, you know, because if they just win the whole day, I'm walking off the field not real happy with my defense, right? So if I was an offensive coach or a defensive coach, I'd probably have a different answer. But from my perspective and the lens I look at it, I'm, I'm, I love it when we have a day like this where there's really good and bad on both sides. It's really competitive. 
Um, and, you know, just seeing them all, you know, get after it out there is encouraging. But um, I think they've really done a nice job. I mean, uh, the staff's done an awesome job, you know, from Garrett down with, with, with just, you know, the details of what we're doing. And the guys have bought in and, and just seeing what I hoped I would see in spring. And that is just kind of just getting our confidence back and, and getting a little swagger back in what we're doing. And, and it's been, uh, I've seen that. And we're still missing a lot of pieces. You know, we got a lot of receivers and guys that aren't quite out here, but these guys have really, really bought in and, and uh, are handling it well. You've heard a lot about Cade having the freedom to tag receivers with a different route. How much have you allowed him to do that? Is he, does he have a freedom to do that a lot, or are you kind of limiting that? Well, it works? depends on the call. I mean, but it, it's, this is definitely a very quarterback friendly offense, for sure. I mean, it's very, very, very quarterback friendly. Um, and uh, he's got a lot of flexibility. You know, he's got to be able to handle that, but but he's demonstrated that, that he can. And, you know, it's it's uh, it's been fun to see it pull together. I mean, uh, you know, philosophy-wise, we're really not any different. Uh, <coughs> uh, the method really isn't any different than what we've always done, really since 2011. The biggest change is procedurally how we're doing some things um, and, and, some, and some, you know, a few, a few tweaks here and there. Uh, whether it be how we how we signal, how we communicate, cadence, uh, some 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 more package opportunities that the quarterback has some flexibility in. Uh, so it's been fun, man. And, and again, the biggest thing is just the buy-in. You know, these guys have really bought into what we're doing. And, uh, uh, probably, I think we've gotten a lot. I mean, we've got, we've got a lot in, but but it's it's a lot of things with complimentary plays to it. And you know, the guys are really understanding that. And uh, man, Garrett's done it. Garrett's been awesome. He's done an amazing job, amazing job of really uh, getting us to this point, you know, uh, where we're coming out of spring. I think really feeling pretty confident about where we're headed. I mean, we got a lot of work to do. There's a lot more we got to build on, but but I think the main goal was to come out of this thing with a lot of momentum into the summer and a lot of confidence. And, um, you know, I've seen that. I think Grisham said that built in kind of a gunslinger mentality to a certain extent, extent being able to change things at the line. Have you seen yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is just, you know, you want to you want to have a chance to be successful. Um, you know, you want to be able to uh, attack where, where their weaknesses are. You want to have, you know, be able to take the matchups where they need to be. And, and uh, but you got to have a quarterback who can who can handle those things. And I think I think we got guys that can do that uh, starting with Kate. I mean, he's got he's demonstrated really good understanding. Uh, but again, procedurally and you know, signals and cadence and a lot of that stuff uh, is, is, is different. And it's been fun to see those guys you know, take ownership of that. And it's, it, 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 I think, again, puts a little bit uh, more flexibility on the quarterback, but I think it's much more friendly for him than what we're doing. It's been fun. Sorry if I missed it, but did Cade and Adam win the egg toss? Apparently, yes. Uh, <laughs> they didn't complete the pass, but the egg didn't break, so I think I think they, they won the day. Uh, the first the softest hands or what? Well, um, I don't know. Uh, proves that they, I mean, because Cade held his own too. That thing got to about 35 yards or so, but you know, it looks like they were a good, a good connection, a good team, good tandem. So hopefully that's a good sign for things to come this fall. Any reward, any reward for them? Yeah, they get, they get a accountability point, a plus, plus accountability point. So they battle for those points. That's a good, good day for, for those two. I think both of them are already plus, so Maybe they'll donate it to somebody who might need it. <laughs> it's been a little bit of a weird spring schedule-wise. So you kind of yep. get 10 days before the spring game. You have maybe like a walk-through next week. Is yep. that it? Yep. Have yep. you ever had a, a big gap like this before no, spring game? No, no, but it's just kind of, you know, the spring for us is all dictated by when is spring break. And our schedule is different because our guys get out the first week of May, right? So you got spring break, um, and then you got when's the kids' spring break, and when's when's – uh, Easter, so there's a lot of things that kind of dictate when we do it, and then you have a certain amount of time that you have to get the days in. And obviously, we we would have liked to have done it this weekend, and we would have if it hadn't been for Easter. But we want to have a great crowd, and we want to have a bunch of recruits here. And you know, we, we that wouldn't have been the case. So we that's really kind of just how it kind of got spread out like this. But it's going to be good. It'll be a good opportunity again for them, some of these guys, to really you know take care of their bodies and really get themselves ready to go. Uh, some good meeting opportunity uh, to just kind of catch up on some things and polish up on some things. And then uh, next Wednesdays is important to practice, so we have all spring. You know, we'll be in shorts, but it's the day where 
Um, you know, we'll do a little bit of a little bit of practice, like you know, Clemson type practice. But then we we really are separate, and and it's the opportunity for our coaches to really teach these guys how things should go in the summer. You know, what skills and drills should look like. You know, how it should be run, so that we're not out there just jacking around. That it's productive. You know, uh, you know, when we're not on the field with them, when when it's really being run, run by. The leadership of both sides, and again, I think that's one of those times where your team really grows. Uh, so you know they they'll start their skills and drills later on in May and a couple days a week, and then it ramps up to like three days a week toward as we get closer to camp. And um, so, I mean, it's 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 a very important practice, you know, to really understand what we want to do in the summer. And then we'll split the team, and everybody will you know get fired up. You know, Coach Easton's going to be a head coach. Coach Spiller's going to be a head coach, and. And uh, we'll get we'll get we'll get it all sorted out and who's orange, who's white, flipping coins and all that, and we'll have some fun and and then we'll uh, come out here and you know have a great day in the valley and, and uh, put on a, put on a show for the fans.